today on Nation, the Window Cleaners podcast, we're going to be talking all about how to increase your repeat customers. So if you've ever cleaned for anybody or you're thinking about cleaning windows for somebody, this is going to be a good episode. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, thanks for checking us out. Have a look around. Hopefully, it's better than a cat video, but there is over five years of content to go back, watch, listen. It's anywhere podcasts are found, and of course, also on YouTube. Uh, listen while you work. Why not, right? Do something to improve yourself. By the way, shameless plug is I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. That is what I do, so I would love to be your rep. I wanna be your guy, your supply guy. I wanna put all of your orders in. Why? Because that's how I get credit for them. And <laughs> it costs you nothing extra. Nothing extra, I make your life easy, you got a guy, I could be there in your back pocket, huh? Questions, answers, everything, that's what I do. Send me a text, 862-312-2026. Listen. The easiest and fastest thing you can do, throw everything in your cart as you're shopping. Just make sure you're logged in. And then just text me, yo, Jersey, my cart is good. I have dozens of people do that every single week, and it is absolutely amazing. Uh, I get to put it in. I'll verify an address with you. Click go. Same really as you. We get to say hi, and I get credit for it. It costs you nothing extra, so why not do it? It's like a virtual high five. It is literally like uh, you saying thank you for anything and everything, and I want to say thank you back. Now, speaking of, speaking of being epic and learning and bettering yourself, if you haven't yet gotten a subscription to the American Window Cleaner Magazine, hear me out. Don't fast forward yet. American Window Cleaner Magazine is absolutely amazing. It is the greatest window cleaning magazine in the world as voted on by me. It is filled with articles, there's posters, there's there's just so much cool stuff for you to look at, listen. Super awesome, it is a print magazine sent to your door. You don't have to do the PDF thing. The best part about it, not the best part, top three, it comes with a sticker sheet, custom stickers that I make personally every single month gets sent with the magazine. So get the stickers, put it on everything, up your knowledge game, be better than your competition, and get a subscription. Go to awcmag.com forward slash sub. awcmag.com. Go to American Window Cleaner Magazine. Get the subscription. Be absolutely amazing. I see it when it comes in. So thank you for everybody who has subscribed. Uh, means the world to me. Yeah. I think that's it. Shameless plugs. Hey, follow me on social. My YouTube channel now, I'm starting up a bunch of vlogs on there, cool high-rise stuff, and uh, we got a bunch of product videos coming out. Anyway, go check that out. Shameless plug stuff done, let's get to the content, the meaty goodness. And this week we're talking about increasing your repeat customers. I gotta start by saying, almost everybody in business focuses on new customers. Everybody's like, well, what can I do to advertise? How can I get customers? What can I... How can I, where should I? But people are not talking about the customers they already have. Roofing companies have to get new customers for every job. A roof lasts 30 years. That means they do a customer for 30 years, they're not gonna get a repeat out of them. That's gotta be awful. We don't have that. We're lucky enough to not have to deal with that. We have customers that we could be doing every six months. Now, before you come in and say, not my customers, my customers are different. I can't, they're, they're only come every two. No, you're doing it wrong. That's why your customers aren't repeating. And that's what we're going to talk about. Now, before we go any farther, before you think that I am, uh, you know, putting this all out there um, as some kind of guru thing. I'm not. I'm a dummy who sits in an office in front of a camera and talks about business. That's it. So take this stuff all with a grain of salt. But I'm telling you, your repeat customers, your existing customers, 
think about this. Let's, before we get going, you don't even have to say this out loud. If you're working right now in the field, you're sitting, you're on the couch, you're doing whatever, how many jobs did you do last year? Ballpark. How many? Think about it. Okay. How many of those were individual customers? How many were not repeat? Okay. How many? You have that number in your head. It may be 10 customers. It may be 50 customers. It may be 100 customers. It may be more than that. Think about out of 300 days a year. Think of 200 days a year of working days that aren't in the slow months. You know you do work every single week, but we'll say 200 days. How many people do you do a day? Okay. How many of those people end up repeating? How many of those people are new? Get your idea. Let's say for simple numbers, you have right now existing 100 customers. Now, if you know your numbers, which I hope you do, you know it's going to be more than that. Or if you're newer or whatever, you may be less than that. Those 100 people have not only been convinced to use you, you've spent money to get them acquisition costs. You've advertised to them. You've done everything. Not only that, but you've proven your staff and you've proven your work to them. You've proven all that to them. They know who you are. They love you. And as soon as you do the work, you're just like, all right, cool, next one. What? You can't do that. You have to focus on the existing customer. Those are the easiest, easiest ones to get going again. So let's dive right in. First off, I'm going to touch on it briefly. If you want to know more about it, go back and listen. But the best thing you will ever learn in your business, ever, ever, is something called a dentist close. I made this up like, a few years ago, but the dentist close itself is simple. When you go to the dentist, when you leave the dentist, you have your next appointment scheduled six months, right? Who made that? Who told you you have to go to the dentist every six months? The dentist. There's no law. There's no dentist said, Hey, best practice, come back every six months. Okay. You're the window cleaner. You now tell people the best practice is every six months. But the dentist clothes works like this. When you're all done and you can tailor it, whatever, start with this, you know kind of what you, to say. But I always say, all right, awesome. So everything is done now. Uh, did you want your uh, next cleaning to be in three months from now or did you want to wait six months? A, I didn't give a yes or no question. B, I gave them two options. They get to pick so their decision is right because they picked it. And three, I told them the two options. My best case scenario is their worst case scenario. Every six months, that's what I want every six months. If they do it every three months, which people do, awesome. But I want people to get every six months, spring and fall, spring and fall. I want six months. If three months is too much, right? If you want to do the, the, the law of threes, did you want this uh, next cleaning next month in three months or six months? They're going to wait six months, but that's what you want them, right? All these people who are waiting years because you didn't ask them, you didn't remind them, you didn't anything. You just were like, cool, I got a customer. I did the job. I got the money. Awesome. Now to the next one. Say you have 100 customers that are all doing the dentist close. That means you now have 200 customers a year. 100 jobs turned into 200 jobs a year. Not only that, but those jobs each time are, are quicker and each time are planned out. You could have jobs right now booked for spring. Do you? Do you have jobs booked for spring? If the answer is no, I'm recording this, by the way, in October. If the answer is no, then that means that your spring right now, as of now, is zero. You have no money next year. You have to work your tail off to get people in next year. Why not make it easier? Another thing you can do to be, you know, these repeat and get big is be, being known. If you become forgotten, which we do, we're window cleaners. The only time people think of us is when they need their windows clean. If you're forgotten, no one's calling you. Or when it comes time to this, and I've had people say this, oh, I don't call my customers, I let them call me. Absolute worst garbage information, worst thing you can do for your business. If you rely on your customers to come back, 
then you have your entire livelihood, your family's livelihood, your company's growth, the size and strength and the business you have, you just put in a bunch of strangers' hands. All right, well, I hope you come back. Not any business anywhere does that. Not anyone. Go to the dentist. If you go to a dentist and you didn't rebook for some weird reason, they already gave you your appointment. They gave you your appointment. You didn't ask. They gave you the appointment. You could do that with the dentist clothes if you're not even asking. All right, great. Well, we got your next cleaning scheduled for this, right? But if they don't, the dentist calls you. You also get postcards. Hey, just a reminder, your appointment's coming. You get postcards saying, hey, just a reminder, we need you to schedule. You get all of that. They remind you. If you think that you're going to McDonald's only when you choose McDonald's, you're lying to yourself because guess what? McDonald's is advertising absolutely everywhere. Ba, 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 ba. You know that. It's in every magazine, every video. It's just to be known and be relevant. I stay relevant. You need to do the same thing with those existing people. You have to stay relevant. Because otherwise, the next time, when they do want window cleaning, which is two years from now because their windows are so bad, that's when they actually realize that they're going to go, who is that I used again? I don't know, something Windows, something. They're going to look it up, and they're going to see 20 um, companies. They're not going to remember you because you're forgettable. They're going to hire somebody that they thought was you, or they're just going to try somebody new because they couldn't remember you. If you didn't build that, if you didn't create that, and you're not being known, they're not going to know you. Be known. Remind them who you are. Advertise, postcards, emails, right? Send them things, calls, all that stuff is so that they remember who you are. 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 Somebody needs to see something, what, five times, seven times before they actually know it? Those mean you. That means you. You have customers right now you haven't even spoken to on five separate occasions, seven separate occasions. They don't know you. Sometimes they do. They're not going to remember you. As soon as you leave, the windows look great. Ask them a week later. What are you thinking about? It's not you. It's not windows. Well, I'm just thinking about how I can't wait for another, you know, few months so I can call my window cleaner. They're not thinking about you. They think about you when they need you. You don't think about your mechanic. You know your location of your mechanic. Right? But if your mechanic closed down right now, and by the way, I don't even, I drive newer vehicles where I'm not in the mechanic all the time, but I have one that I've dealt with before that I like. But if I showed up and the doors were closed and it didn't say where they moved to, I'd just be like, well, I guess I'm going to another one. They're not being known. Right? Another way to get your hands kind of in people's pockets is with other services. Now, adding add-ons, not a jack of all trades, but say you do window cleaning, you also do house washing. Right? Say you do window cleaning, but now you're adding gutter cleaning. Right? Say you're a window cleaner, but you're doing roof cleaning, right? The, the, the core. Well, now you can get in and you have a reason to talk to people. Right? I do sales for window cleaning resource. That's what I do. That's my livelihood. I own American Window Cleaner Magazine. That's my livelihood. I have to find reasons for people to buy from me. I need to find reasons for me to be able to tell you, hey, American Window Cleaner is the greatest magazine ever. Check this out, right? So we sell stickers by themselves. So we sell shirts by themselves. So we sell this and this and this so we can show you different things to get you in, hopefully having you get a subscription. I want every window, to ha window cleaner to have a subscription. I want to be the absolute best known. I want it to be so common of a name that I could help so many people with the media, the content, the learning, the everything. You know why I do this. I've done this five years. But I need to do things and offer things. If I offer one thing forever, I can only talk about the one thing. Use those to your advantage, especially if you're trying to get repeat customers. Somebody had you for Windows, guess what? I'm going to send them something, a postcard next month about a different service. I could send them two weeks later and be like, hey, just wanted to call you. I could call them the next day and say, I just wanted to know how the job went. Went good? Yeah, okay, just so you know, we also do roof cleaning. It looked like your roof was uh, definitely in need of it. And since you're a repeat customer, you know, we'd love to get you up, right? If I call them the next day and go, hey, just how'd it look? Good? Yeah, well, I'd like to book your window cleaning next week. 
right? That's maybe a little too close. But if you're doing your follow-up calls and they didn't, they pass on the dentist close, now your office calls them and says, hey, I just want to check in, see how everything was going. By the way, we didn't have a, uh, a next appointment for you. I had you down six uh, months from now, actually, is the third week of um, uh, March. How does that look for you? Right? Increasing your repeat is easier than getting new stuff. Get the efficiency out of something. It's like buying a water fed. The only reason you buy a water fed, not the only reason, one of the best reasons is you're so busy, you get a water fed, now you can do more work faster, you're building your efficiencies. That's what getting customers is. And I'm gonna tell you right now, discounts don't matter. Do not think that, well, nobody wants to buy from me. Uh, I better go cheaper. Hey, uh, if you book with us again, we'll take this much. No, you're absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. Because if it's in somebody's head, they're hiring you for you. Well, go to the experience. I am the absolute biggest believer on experience. If you're creating a awesome experience, they're remembering the experience. It's not the dollar. They want you. Right? So don't offer them a discount thinking that's how you get repeat people. You can up your game is how you contact them, communicate with them. You can up your game with not only your communication, but just your overall um, you know, awareness of your company. It does not come down to a discount. Discounts don't matter. They've already used you. They've already used you, right? Make a connection. When we talk about experiences, the connection matters. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I sold my company, you know that. But for probably the last, probably, okay, so I did one job by myself when I started my company. I hired somebody instantly. And I knew that I wanted to run a business. I knew that I wasn't like there to be the one that cleans the windows. So after about a year, I hired on second person. And then there was a crew and I pulled myself out. And I worked in the field off and on, but I would say the last probably five years, I was not in the field more than two days. And that was just when staff was like super, super sick or we were too busy to train, something like that, right? Now, what that means is that my customers didn't know who I was. They may talk to me on the phone, right? I was one of the people who answered phones. Maybe they talked to me on the phone. Maybe I met them somewhere, right? Maybe I was at a home show or trade show or something and I met them and they really liked me and that's why they hired my company. But most of the people did not know who I was, even to the point where I've always been this story up because it's one of my favorite ones, but we did this guy uh, every two weeks, his house every single two weeks. We did this uh, batch of condos. We did these condos every two weeks. Anyway, um, he was a doctor, a uh, really nice guy, super old, retired, you know, whatever. One day, uh, I was cleaning. Uh, we had the flu. You guys have heard the story. Um, and I'm out there cleaning, and the guy gets done, and it was like, the, the, the it was a very small, whatever, check, $129, I think, because we did like four condos at a time or something. And uh, he walked up to me, and he goes, oh, man, everything looks great, you know? And he goes to hand me the check. He goes, actually, I'm sorry. Is Gary here? Is he? I saw him before. Did he leave? Or I said, no, he's just on the back finishing up. Oh, okay. I, I, I hope you don't mind. I'm just going to give the check to Gary, who was my operations officer. Said, Absolutely. No, no. Cool. Thank you. Just a pleasure helping you. He wouldn't even give me the check because he did not build a connection with me. His connection with, with Gary, the crew chief who was there every single two weeks. They talked. He helped his, you know, train his dog. He did everything else. That's the connection. If somebody really, really likes Gary, they really, really like us. The connection's there because a connection is better than a business. If somebody hires you because you're XYZ window cleaning, they're going to hire the next guy that comes in as whatever other window cleaning because all they need is the, the name. But if they deal with John, whatever, whoever your name is listening or watching, but if they only deal with you, there's only one you. If they only deal with that one guy or that one crew, or that one tech, or that one whatever, they've built the connection. Hire the person, 
train the job. I know you guys, I've talked about that a bunch of times. The, the big part of it is that the people matter for the connection. If your best friend does HVAC, that's who you're only going to deal with in HVAC. If people really, really like you, it doesn't matter if either you know you uh, left a smudge or you were late one day or something came up. They're like, ah, whatever. That's Jersey, right? That is a connection, personal connection. Make the personal connection. Don't, don't forget that a connection allows you to be a name or a person, right? Where no connection, you're just a company. You know how people, especially new guys, they focus on price. And you know my thoughts on price. It just, it doesn't, it's just not a thing, right? If you're not able to explain your value, if you're not able to help them understand your value, which is sales, that's sales. If you're not good at sales, which there's a lot of you out there who aren't, you may know who you are, you know you could get better, right? If that's your weakness, that's why people aren't buying from you. It's not because you're cheaper. The guy who instantly goes, well, yeah, um, yeah, we'll do it for $99. And they're like, yeah, um, yeah, no, I'll pass. Well, actually, you know, if you want to do it today, we'll, we'll, we'll knock it to 79. Like all you've told them is the price. That's all they can look at is the price. And then you get to a certain point. If I come to your house and say, Hey, I'll clean your whole house for $12. You'd be like, ah, no, <laughs> you're going to do terrible work. There's no way you could do this for $12, right? So you're racing to the bottom when you're focused on price, when you're not focused on price and your experience is up there, it's a whole other world. Right? Make the connection, build that. A big part of all of this is you, you're, you're, you've been seen. They know who you are. You're reminding them with postcards and everything else. You have to call them a couple times a year. Because remember, a postcard's cold. That's a company sent that. A call is you. Jersey called me. If you call and say, hey, it's Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. We're just calling, uh, putting together our spring schedule. I didn't see you on there, and I'd love to kind of get you in the books. I didn't ask no question, right? Now that person, oh, my gosh. I, every, I've had one person in 16 years who was upset that I called them. 20 minutes later, he called me back, and he goes, oh, my gosh. He says, is this Jersey? I said, yeah, yeah. I can't believe that I was so mad. I thought you were a telemarketer. He's like, this is the, like the fifth time somebody called me today. And I just thought, I, and I remembered, I use you guys all the time. And I love your company. I love you guys. This is so great. I can't believe that I was like that. I just, I just assumed, right? I absolutely want to get on your schedule. I'm so sorry. When we got there, he talked to me. He uh, tipped the guys like a crazy amount. He tipped the guys more than the, the account was, the, the job was worth. And it was because he just felt bad at that point. I've never had somebody be mad. Uh, yeah, hey, uh, we provide you happiness. Uh, we would like to provide you happiness again. Are you interested? No one's going to be like, you stupid person for calling me. I can't believe you. No. My job is to remind you your job is to live life. Windows are my life. They're not yours. That's what I tell people when I call. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for calling. Thank you so much for reminding me. I can't believe, you know, uh, thank you. Uh, yes, let's do that. You know, uh, Tuesday doesn't work, but what about a Thursday? It's Thursday, yeah. Call them and don't be scared to call them. Don't be scared to call them. Right? I, um, as you guys may know, this is a secret. Whoever's watching, keep it on the down low. But... I do private coaching. I don't advertise the private coaching part. And I only have so many slots, which actually to think about it, I have a slot open right now. One slot, one slot only. But I don't advertise. I don't put it out there. I don't do, uh, I don't do that. People are like, oh my gosh, can I review your, your coaching? Like if you've, you've changed my company, all this stuff. And I love that. Love, love, love that. That's what I do. That's why I do the private coaching stuff. But a big part of it is we switched our program 
from more email stuff to calls. We've had both of them going for a while and I'm really trying to pull anything away from email. So every single week, all of my coaching clients, I call. We have a real conversation. It's only 30 minutes, doesn't take up a bunch of your time, but we have a real conversation every single week. I know the company in and out. They know me. They can ask me anything, anything they want at any time. In these calls, it's 30 minutes of dedicated time directly to them, right? What kind of connection can you build talking to somebody in real life? That's why I do that. Yes, I could, hey, list out your your problems for the week. Let's do it on email. I've done that for a while. I hate it so much. There's no connection. It's cold. It's an email. Anybody can write an email. But a call is real. When you call somebody or you spend time, like I said, on the coaching side of things, that 30 minutes is connection. That's 30 minutes of connection. I can be on such a better wavelength with you. I can feel your business. I can be in your business. You can't do that over email, right? I can't do that with a postcard, right? So so understand the power of an actual call. A person calls, right? A company sends out a letter. A company sends out a postcard. A person calls. Calls are huge. But that wasn't a ploy for, if you're still watching, there is one slot open if you want to fill that slot. Uh, I think it's Thursday mornings. Anyway, email me, text me, call me, whatever. Anyway, create an experience. That's the biggest part of this whole thing. The biggest takeaway from increasing repeat customers is creating an experience. If you just clean windows, guess what? There's a lot of people who just clean windows. There's a lot of companies who just clean windows. In fact, every window cleaner in your area, every single one, cleans windows. That sounds like such a stupid thing, but think about that. Every single window cleaner in the entire country cleans windows. Every window cleaning company in the entire world, every single one of them cleans windows. Okay, well, if they all do it, take it off the thing, take it off the table. Every car dealership sells cars. Guess what? They don't advertise that they sell cars. That's called a known fact. So is window cleaning. But guess what? Any company anywhere can create an experience. An experience is something you remember. You went to Punta Cana? How was the experience? Right? Everybody goes, oh, how was your flight? No one goes, oh, when you got on that plane, did it did it fly you to your destination? Yeah. Every airplane and every flight ever brings you to your destination. Unfortunately, not everyone, but I digress. (laughs) It just got dark, I'm sorry. But you know what I'm saying? So no one brings that up. They say, how was the flight? That was good. They're asking, how was the experience? If you create the experience in your company, they remember the experience. How was your wedding? How was your reception? How was that trip you took? Remember that cruise you went on? No one says, hey, when you were on that cruise, did they provide you with a place to sleep? No, because they all do that, right? No one cares about that because it's a uniform. It's fact. Everyone cleans windows. There's beds in every hotel room. What they ask you is, how was the experience? The experience is what matters more. If you've done something where you've spent too much money, you're like, oh man, it was so expensive, but it was so good. I know guys went to Disney for tens of thousands of dollars. I know guys have stayed in state rooms in um, cruises, it's like five to ten thousand dollars a person on a cruise. It's absurd. But talk to them, and they will tell you the experience. They don't tell you the cost. They don't go back and go, well, now, you know, last time it was absolutely the most amazing experience I've ever had on that cruise. I'm going to go get uh, the the lowest level inside cabin room that I can for $200. They're not going to do that. Why? Because they've experienced the other side. That's what you have to do. The experience you're providing for your window cleaning allows people to want that experience again. And it brings everything back into the round. This whole show 
comes back together all because of that. Whew. I'm heated this morning. I'm sorry. Sorry for the uh, plane crash joke. <laughs> Some of you will get it. Some of you won't. Anyway, if you didn't know, though, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. That's what I do. What I do. I love helping people. And I want to help you. Really, all orders. A $50 order. Just shoot me a text. Yo, it's in my cart. I take care of the rest. It's so easy. And I get credit for it. And it's like you saying thank you or you just helping a brother out. If you want that, my number's on the screen if you're watching, but it's 862-312-2026. Yes, that's a cell phone. Text me, call me, whatever. I would genuinely appreciate it. It makes my day and it makes me be able to live and provide for my family. Guilt trip. Shameless plug. All in one. And I love helping people. If you got questions, ask me. But I also have the American Window Cleaner magazine. The magazine has been around since 1986. Absolutely amazing magazine, I must say so myself. We are in a huge push for more subs right now. I'd love you to be on that list. I would love nothing more than you to get a subscription. So go to awcmag.com forward slash sub and get your subscription and tell me you got a subscription. I love when people are like, yo, I subscribed last night. It's so rad. <laughs> But anyway, the magazine is bigger than it has ever been. It's better than it's ever been. Uh, the stickers are everywhere. It's amazing. So go and get your subscription. Shameless plugs all done. Until next week there, focus on your repeat customers. Do not lose sight. That's one part you could always do better in your businesses, your repeat customers. But more importantly, until next week, go out there and be epic.